Hastings with incredible This was my first boxing match. He basically had nothing. Francis Ngannou has shocked the world. I'm sure many of you have already seen the fight, but most of us were very surprised in seeing just how well Francis did against the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, Fury. But without further ado, if you have not seen the fight, let's take a look at the highlights and really analyze what we saw. Distance with incredible skill and he comes so Tyson, as we saw, he came out hard and heavy with a hard left-right combination. I think it was to establish dominance right out the gate. You're not gonna come into my world and beat me. Francis has something else up his sleeve. With a right hand. Oh, he catches him off guard! The left hook heard around the world. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. You saw those? Boom, right on the temple, puts Tyson down. From a little bit too close. From mid Let's look at that from another angle. Look at this beautifully timed hook over the right hand. Beautiful. I mean, just mwah. Look at the eyes. <laughs> and stand in his position to be able to land that shot right there. Florent Tyson Fury. Oh, damn, Beautiful look at the back row right jiggling ridiculously. What went wrong with that right hand on Tyson's part? And we're just analyzing it. We're not judging it because Tyson is an amazing boxer. He's an all-time great. I think we lose track of that sometimes. We broke hands. Fight of his profession. Into the firing line. Wait another quick fire. We're on. What happens when you throw your right hand sometimes and you throw it off the left hook is the right hand will be inherently shorter because you're throwing a short hook in order to set it up. It's not like a jab right hand. And you'll see here, he throws the hook. See that hook? That immediately puts him at closer range for the right hand. The right hand was short. There wasn't a full extension on that right hand. Putting Fury in perfect distance to get countered by Ngannou over the top. Check it out. Pop. Now that hook wouldn't have landed if that right cross by Fury was elongated, but that's part of the beauty of fighting. Anything can happen, and it's a credit to Ngannou. Staying calm, staying in the pocket, keeping his eyes open, being perceptive and reading that shot coming over the top of the hook, inspiring to see. We're gonna give Ngano his flowers because what he did is so monumental. And I think we're watching this fight expecting him to get completely just washed. Like I was, to be honest. I think by the mid round, I was expecting him to fall apart and he didn't. But we gotta give Tyson some credit too, with no excuses of him taking him lightly. He didn't train properly, ring rust as he alluded to. We're not gonna even discuss that. We're just gonna look at the facts. He landed some decent shots as well. If he can Boom, nice right hand. Right hand behind the jab. You see what Ngano's doing? Every time he's eating the right hand, he's trying to repeat history and land that hook over the top, but he's just a little bit short. Tyson figured out if I can land the right hand and pull out quick, I'll be able to essentially be out of distance for the left hand counter, which is exactly what he was doing there. Beautiful right hand placement. Francis Ngano fires back. Fury missing with the pop. That was an elbow. That was an illegal elbow. Did nothing to Ngano. Look at this elbow. He eats it. Bong. Look at him. He goes. I'm accustomed to this. Trying to drive down a right Another night, right, right hand. Fury, Francis. Oh, that's where you see the power of Ngano too. These are short shots, and they're just taking the legs out from Tyson. Some guys have that thudding power. You see those short range hooks in close and you can see it just slowly sapping out the energy from Fury. Some guys hit that hard, it's mythical. They don't need much rotation and they don't need much traveling distance to do tremendous damage. Unreal. All right, so let's take a look at what some of the pros are saying about the fight. Sean Strickland, man, I never thought I'd say this, but Francis is in this. Let's can go. Tyson looks winded in the third and he's reaching. Wow, Francis dropped him. Just the sheer shock, as you can see here, I'll scroll. You can see everyone's going, what is happening right now? What's happening right now? I mean, nobody anticipated Tyson Fury to be able to do what he did in the way that he did. Tyson Fury was constantly bear hugging and clinching in the fight, which was sort of an inversion of what we expected. There was even a moment where Tyson Fury fell forward and was double legging, grabbing around Ngannou's legs and looked like he was almost attempting a takedown. But what I deem as being the reality was he was actually rocked, fatigued, his legs were leaving him, and he was in a position where he just fell forward. I think he was truly rocked in that moment. You know, MMA guys have gotten a bad rap. A big part of that is because Jake Paul went on a complete killing spree, knocking out a bunch of retired MMA fighters who were never boxers to begin with. Problem child! To conflate the two, a retired wrestler who's not a puncher versus an MMA fighter who specializes in striking, I now think people can see the difference, right? That maybe some of these top MMA strikers, as McGregor showed in his Mayweather fight where he did fantastic up until I think the seventh round, he started falling apart. If you come from MMA and you have a diligent background in striking, specifically boxing, a lot of it does actually transfer over, especially in the higher weight classes. Not to take anything away from Fury, but heavyweights have less technique, let's face it. There's less dimension to their game, but 
once you get into those lower weight classes, for instance, we talk about Sean O'Malley. He's instigating a fight with Javante Davis. O'Malley is a great puncher for MMA, but because he's a lighter weight, I don't think it's going to transfer over well in a fight against Javante Davis. But again, as a heavyweight, the game changes quite a bit. This is the day after the fight. Check this out. Tyson's face and Ganu's face. Obviously, we know who was landing the harder punches, who was doing the more damage that night. Francis won. Both have black eyes. Yes. This is a good point. Surprised that elbow from Fury didn't cut Francis. Very true. Francis ate it, wore it well, and kept going forward. Even when we look at the comments on YouTube, most people seem to suspect that, you know, it was a ripoff. Francis should have won that fight. I mean, if you go by the Queensberry rules and it's round by round, you can kind of see if you're being objective how maybe they could have given it to Fury. But as we said before, judging on their faces, we knew who was landing the harder punches in the match. And again, every time Ngannou would land something, it would have this dramatic effect on Fury, just optically speaking, that is going to affect the way that we perceive the fight as we watch it. You know, I don't even get into who won, who lost. We know that boxing judges suck. I think Ngannou won the fight. Sometimes you have a fight, you lose the fight on paper, but you actually win the fight at the end of the day. And I think that's exactly what happened with Ngannou. I think, sure, he's going to go home with a loss on his record. He's 0-1 now as a boxer. But the truth is, he stood in there with the greatest fighter of this generation, and he put him on his and Keister. And what this opens up for us now is a plethora of options. He can go to PFL, which I believe he has a stake of ownership in that organization. He can do amazing things in PFL. I'm not that interested in it, but could be cool. Or he can go on and continue boxing, which I hope he does. He has fighters like AJ he could fight. He has, obviously, the fight that I'm pulling for, the Wilder fight. Can you imagine a situation where Ngannou, a ferocious puncher versus Wilder, the greatest puncher of this generation in boxing? I mean, the fight sells itself, so I'd be stoked for that one. Some people are even saying they'd like to see Francis versus Ruiz. I mean, but do you guys like this video? Damn, I had to squeeze it in. I looked for an opportunity and I took it when I felt it. Regardless of what Francis does, I'm in for it. He's proven to the world that he could fight in boxing and MMA. He's a rare breed and he gives inspiration to all of us. Any of you guys who are watching this video right now that have been through hardships, rough upbringings, feel like the world's abandoned you, Francis is the perfect role model. This is a guy who comes from Cameroon. He basically had nothing. He figured out not just how to elevate his life and to sustain himself, but how to become world renowned in combat sports across multiple disciplines, unheard of. I found huge inspiration from watching him fight Fury, even just how he dealt with people in the post fight interviews he was given. He seemed so humble and so present of what the circumstances were. He believed he won the fight as he should, but regardless of that, this is a man that all of us can find inspiration from. Now, if you guys are looking to develop your discipline and your habits, I have a pinned comment down below to my free newsletter. I also put out community posts every single day. You guys can check that out. Sometimes we're going through life and we just need something to keep us on that track. I know that I'm no different than you guys, but I've acquired a certain amount of experience that I think could help some of you. Strangle Gang, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next one.